Yes, guys. So let's see further more additions as far as your India's 115 is concerned. They are included in your study material recently. So let's see these questions. These should be the most important ones. India's uh, 115, question number 17. An entity G has entered into a contract with customer P for the sale of a machinery for 20 lakhs. P intends to use the machine to start a food processing unit. The food processing industry is highly competitive and P has a very little experience in that industry. P pays a non-refundable deposit of just 1 lakh at the inception of the contract and enters into a long-term financing arrangement with G Limited. To pay the balance 19 lakhs of the consideration, they are entering into a long-term financing arrangement with the vendor who is G Limited for the remaining 95% of the agreed consideration, which it intends to pay primarily from the income derived from the food processing industry, as it lacks any other major source of income. The financing arrangement is provided on a non-recourse basis. What do you mean by non-recourse basis? He further explains, which means that if P defaults, then G Limited will repossess the machinery and cannot seek further compensation from P Limited, even if the full value of the amount owed is not recovered from the machinery. The cost of the machinery for G Limited is about 12 lakhs. P obtains control of the machinery at the inception of the contract. When should G Limited recognize revenue for the sale of machinery to P Limited in accordance with India's 115? The first paragraph that I will test as far as recognizing revenue is should I consider this particular contract as contract of uh, as a contract with customers? So first of all, when I use the uh, you know the heading of India's 115 revenue from contract with customer. There are certain parameters to be met to be called as a contract with customer within the subject of India's 115. There are five parameters to be met. First one, both the parties to the contract have agreed to the contract either orally or in written form. Both the parties have understood their rights and obligation with respect to goods and services which are supposed to be uh, delivered in the contract. Third one, the contract has a commercial substance. Fourth one, the parties have identified a transaction price within the contract. Last one, there is a high probability that the consideration will be received for the goods and services transferred within the contract. When do I say that it is probable to be received? When the customer has an intention and ability to pay. Now, putting the fifth one to test, where the consideration is probable to be collected. That means the party or the customer has both an intention as well as an ability to pay the consideration under the contract. Look at here. Number one, the amount or the balance 19 lakhs of consideration, which is supposed to be collected from the customer, is primarily paid out of income derived from the food processing industry and there is no other major source of income to P-Limit. First indicator to say that it is not convincing enough that the consideration will be received. Furthermore, collaborative evidence, if I have to add, I'll read the first paragraph which says, P has a very little experience in the said industry. Furthermore, collaborative evidence I'll take on saying that it is on a non-recourse basis. That means if P Limited fails to pay the amount, G has a right to repossess the machinery, but cannot seek P for any extra payment, even if the machinery was not meeting or was not sufficient to cover the amount outstanding from P Limited. So this gives us sufficient evidence that the contract is not meeting the definition of India's 115 or the ambit of India's 115. Therefore, revenue cannot be recognized and on the date on which the contract has been entered into because the consideration co supposed to be collected from the contract is not probable. Even though P Limited has an intention to pay, but they still lack the ability to pay the amount. First thing, what about the one lakh? What about that 1 lakh which I have received initially as a non-refundable deposit? Can I recognize that as income? Any amount collected as a, uh, you know, as a part of consideration in the contract can be recognized as revenue in two cases. Number one, there is no further goods or services to be delivered as a part of the contract. Number two, where the contract is terminated and the amount collected so far is non-refundable. Even this condition also cannot be satisfied because just because the contract is not terminated, 
and the goods and services are supplied within the contract, I am not really convinced about. Therefore, I may not say that that 1 lakh also should be recognized as income. So therefore, the income recognition in this particular uh, case in question number 17 will obviously be deferred. Deferred until when? Until it is deferred, I will, I will uh, show this amount as a liability. I'll show it as a liability. So I'll write it as customer P limited to a liability. I will recognize this liability as income only when the condition number 5 where the consideration is probable to be received is crystallized. Once I understand that the, con the condition number 5 is satisfied, that P limited is in a position that they will meet the consideration as per the contract, then I will start recognizing the income. But until then, the income from the contract should be deferred. Clear? Let's look at question number 18 then. Entity I sells a piece of machinery to the customer for 2 million payable in 90 days. Entity I is aware that at the contract inception that the customer may not pay the full contract price. Entity I estimates that the contract will pay at least, the customer will pay at least 1.75 million, which is sufficient to cover the entity's cost of sale, which is only 1.5 million, which the entity I is willing to accept because it wants to grow its presence in the market. Entity I has granted similar price concession in comparable contract. Guys, whenever there is a past trend of price concession, then there exists a variable consideration in the contract. Whenever I have variable consideration in the contract, I will recognize only uh, revenue only to the extent of revenue to which the reversal of revenue is uncertain or reversal of revenue is not highly probable. Where is the re reversal of revenue not highly probable? To the extent of 1.75 which is likely to be received the reversal of revenue recognized is highly not highly probable therefore the enterprise i or entity i can recognize revenue to the extent of 1.75 clear what is the transaction price it is only 1.75 question number 19 entity k sells electric razors to the customer to the retailers at C is a currency guys, 50 per unit. The rebate the coupon is included inside the electric razor that can be redeemed by the end customer for 10 per unit, whatever currency it is. Entity K estimates that 20 to 25% of the edible uh, of the eligible rebate shall be redeemed. Guys, out of the all the customers, to every customer whom I sell it at 50, I'm saying that there will be a consideration which is paid to the customer in the form of a coupon. That coupon rebate is about 10. And I am not expecting everyone to use that particular rebate. Only 25% of the eligible people will be using that rebate, 20 to 25. K concludes that the transaction price shall incorporate an assumption that 25% rebate uh, redemption, as which the amount is highly probable that significant reversal of cumulative revenues will not occur if the estimated rebates change. How does K estimate determine the transaction price? So when I actually recognize the revenue, I will recognize revenue to the extent of 50 minus 10 rupees out of which only 25% is eligible or is generally uh, redeemed. So 25% of 10 which is 2.5. Therefore for each razor sold, the enterprise will recognize only a revenue of 47.5. The balance 2.5 which I collected from the customer, I'll put it as a liability until the rebate is actually utilized or the rebate lapses. If the rebate is utilized, then I will I'll cancel it against the subsequent revenue. And if the rebate is no longer eligible, that means it is expired, then in such cases, such liability will be recognized as revenue at a later point of time. So initially when I recognize the transaction, I'll write the entry as bank account debit 50, two sales 47.5, two liability for coupon is 2.5. If it is further utilized at a later point of time, then I will write uh, liability for coupon 2.5, two sales. The same way I will also recognize revenue only when the liability has lapsed or the rebate has uh, or the coupon is terminated. Clear? Question number 20. 